Hey fish friends, welcome to today's care guide on Cory Doras, also commonly referred to as Cory's, Cory catfish, and Cory cats. I'll be talking about the most commonly kept species in the planted aquarium since they all have fairly similar requirements. However, keep in mind that there are over 160 recorded species of Cory Doras, and if you're keeping a unique species, they may have different requirements. I'll also talk about what I think of as a false myth in the fish keeping world with regards to quarries and substrate. Quarries are found naturally throughout South America, from east of the Andes throughout much of Brazil, and even as far as Trinidad in the Caribbean. They inhabit small streams, river margins, and marshy areas. They can be found swimming in and out of different ecosystems from densely planted areas to open sand beds. Although they are found in moving water, it's often slow moving in murky tributaries of bigger, faster moving rivers. Unless you're keeping a dwarf or pygmy species, it's a good idea to start with a 20 gallon or 75 liter aquarium. Anything with a larger footprint versus a taller tank is a good idea since quarries are bottom dwellers. When kept in small tanks, they spend a lot of time glass surfing or swimming up and down the glass frantically. That's a sign of stress and can be an indicator that something is off in their environment. When deciding how big of an aquarium to get for your quarries, keep in mind that they are a social fish and should be kept in groups of at least six. You can keep schools of different species together, but it is a good idea to keep at least six of each species. Smaller dwarf or pygmy species can be kept in 5 gallon tanks, though more space is never a bad thing. With pygmy quarries, it's a good idea to keep them in groups of 10 or more. Make sure to provide quarries of any size with plenty of hiding spots. Caves are greatly appreciated by Corydoras. While not essential, live plants are always a terrific addition to any aquarium, but specifically a Corydoras habitat. Even though they are not exclusively herbivorous fish, they do enjoy sifting through detritus and other organic debris. Soft sand is a perfect touch to any quarry tank. You can observe them spending much of the day foraging by sifting sand through their gills. It's not an absolute must-have for a quarry tank. I've seen them live long, healthy lives in gravel bottom tanks or tanks with planted aquarium soil. But there is something fun about watching them sift sand through their gills and using their barbels or whiskers to search through the sand. Personally, I always make sure to provide them with soft sand. Pool filter sand works great if you're on a budget, but even softer would be some Carib Sea Super Naturals. Water parameters. Temperature should be kept between 72 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 22 and 27 degrees Celsius. This can vary a bit depending on the species you're keeping, so look into this before picking up any quarries. pH ranges from slightly acidic to slightly basic, 6.5 to 8. Wild caught quarries can tolerate more acidic conditions down to as low as 5, but captive bred ones should not be subjected to such a low pH. KH, they can take a fairly wide range from 3 to 10 degrees. GH is not something that's included in a lot of the quarry care guides online, but I usually aim for a low to medium level, somewhere between 2 to 6 or 7 degrees. Ammonia and nitrites should always be at zero. Nitrates, try and keep them under 20, but if you push 30, you're probably okay as long as you don't keep it there for long. Quarry doors are relatively hardy even though they most often live in interconnected bodies of flowing water, they have evolved to temporarily live in bodies of water that get separated from the creeks or streams during dry season. It's pretty common for these small pools to drop in pH quite drastically and to observe really large temperature fluctuations between day and night since the sun can quickly heat up these small pools. Appearance. Cories grow to about one to three inches or two and a half to seven and a half centimeters. They almost always take on this shape. Actually, as far as I know, they always look like this. Uh, rather normal looking catfish, a little bit taller than your standard flat cat. Unlike other catfish that have soft bodies, cories are armored. 
with tough scales and sharp, often venomous point on their dorsal fin, they are not to be messed with. They come out in a variety of different colors and patterns, though they're often light to dark gray with red, emerald, gold, or green hues. Stripes and patterns are very common, but vibrant colors tend not to be. They're still a gorgeous fish with really natural, metallic, beautiful shimmers in different angles, and they have a very interesting woven scale structure. Their scales are pretty large and remind me of almost overlapping medieval armor. One of the most notable aspects of Cory appearance are their barbels or whiskers for the layman. It's certainly one of my favorite aspects about a Cory Dora and one that gives them their cute little charm. Corys are bottom dwellers and spend the overwhelming majority of time foraging around on the bottom of the aquarium. I've already talked about sand and how they like to sift it through their gills, which is a really fun behavior to observe. Some other things to note about Corydora behavior is that they are a really skittish fish. In aquariums that get a lot of nearby foot traffic, they can get accustomed to people being out and about, but in tanks that don't get tons of human activity nearby, they get accustomed to not seeing people and will quickly dart into hiding the second anyone approaches the tank. The more time you spend sitting near your tank while you feed them, the more you can teach them to associate humans with food, which will help to keep them out. Corys are an extremely peaceful fish. I've never seen them mess with other species of fishes, each other, or even juvenile shrimp. Though I wouldn't put it past them to eat newborn shrimp if they ended up right in front of them. You may notice that your Cory catfish likes to swim up to the surface and then will dart back down to the bottom of the tank. That's because they can breathe air. They take a gulp, and then, unlike mammals who pass it through our lungs, Cory's pass it through their intestines, where oxygen is extracted. Please don't ask me where the rest of the air goes out. Let's just say the jacuzzi is a bubbling. They're able to breathe air because in the wild, those slow-moving bodies of water that get um, separated and turned into stagnant pools that I talked about earlier, those have little to no dissolved oxygen content especially when they heat up since warm water is less efficient at holding oxygen than cool water. It's interesting though to notice that there doesn't appear to be a rhyme or reason for why they gulp air in the home aquarium. Even when the tank is saturated with oxygen, they appear just to enjoy catching some fresh air. Diet. A lot of people tend to think of bottom feeders in the aquarium as being herbivores or scum suckers, but that certainly isn't the case, especially when it comes to catfish. Corys are omnivorous fish that should enjoy a varied diet of high quality food. I often feed them extra of whatever I'm feeding my other fish. Flakes, pellets, wafers are all happily accepted and uh, frozen foods like bloodworms or mice shrimp are also great to supplement once or twice a week. They really go crazy for live foods. I feed mine young scuds. In terms of fresh veggies, I throw in zucchini and blanched broccoli. They seem to get really excited initially, but quickly lose interest after a few bites, kind of like kids. And unlike the higher protein foods, which they will pick at until uh, they are completely gone. Tank mates. Corys make a great addition to pretty much any community tank. They do well with a variety of smaller fishes like tetras, nanios, rasporas, and barbs, as well as larger community fishes like angels, severums, and acaras. They're also fine to keep with breeding shrimp colonies. Despite their venomous dorsal spine, they do not do well with larger aggressive fish like oscars and arowanas. Breeding. Many species of quarry cats will easily breed in aquariums. I've unintentionally bred panda quarries in the past, when I had a Fluvoflex 15 set up with some small community fish and shrimp. Females are a little more robust than the slender males. That's due to the fact that they need a little more space to carry eggs. Sometimes dropping the temperature of incoming water during a water change by a couple degrees is enough to simulate monsoonal spring storms and trigger breeding. Corys scatter eggs, so providing a lot of hiding spots for those eggs and fry is important if you wish to successfully breed them in your display tank. 
You can give them good hiding spots just by um, throwing a bunch of Java or Christmas moss along the bottom of your tank. In some species, breeding may require more specific triggers with regards to pH, KH, live foods, or a combination of any of those elements in addition to temperature. Myths regarding substrate and other facts. One of the most common myths regarding Corydoras is that they cannot tolerate sharp rocks or non-sand substrate in aquariums. I'd have to say that I have serious reservations about this. I've seen plenty of quarries live long, healthy lives in gravel or planted aquarium soil bottom tanks. I do think that there is some truth to this with regards to keeping only sharp edge substrate like coarse sand or sea chem fluorite. Naturally, quarries use their barbels to search around for food along the bottom of the tank. If the entire bottom of the tank is lined with sharp substrate, they'll just constantly be scratching up their whiskers and it could lead to deterioration of those barbels. It's a good idea to cap areas of sharp substrate or just to provide them with other adequate spots in your tank if the whole bottom of the tank is full of sharp areas. Some sharp rocks here or there won't lead to the destruction of your quarry's barbels. Naturally, in the wild, quarries live with a variety of different objects, including sharp sticks and pointy rocks. Um, if one area isn't suitable for them, they can swim to another area that is. They're not complete idiots. They're not going to see the one sharp stick and then all of them cram their heads onto it, uh, skewering themselves. They are successful fish that have evolved into over 160 different species, which doesn't happen for just any idiot fish. If your Corydoras are losing their barbels, it's worth considering substrate, like if you only got sharp stuff across the whole bottom of your tank, but from what I've seen over the years, it's far more likely that poor water quality or diet are to blame. So if your water parameters are in line with what I talked about earlier and your quarries are getting a fairly healthy diet, then they'll probably be all right. The last myth I want to address today is with regards to spelling. One quarry, two quarries. That's it for Cory Doris. Thanks a lot for watching. Drop a comment if you have any questions or if you just enjoyed today's video. I always like hearing that. Consider subscribing if today's video was helpful. Until next time, see ya! Thank you.